the stress is defined as total force applied over the surface divided by the contact area so f by a in case of solids stress developed is proportional to the deformation of the rubber okay this is for the solids now if we look in case of fluid the same example you can consider there are two parallel plates and between them there is a fluid and when we apply a shear force on the upper surface what happens the fluid will begin to deform means that in case of fluids the fluid will begin to move whenever we apply a shear force however small it may be so this is the very important difference between the solid and fluids and the stress developed inside the fluid is proportional to rate of deformation in solids it is proportional to deformation and in fluids it is proportional to rate of deformation this is the distinguishing factor between the fluids and solids whenever we apply a shear force to the fluid it will begin to move it will begin to flow it will begin to move or it will begin to deform continuously but in case of solids it will deform to certain extent and if the force is further increased finally it will break down but in case of fluids it will begin to move however small may be the shear force solids can resist an applied shear force by deforming stress is proportional to strain but in case of fluid deforms continuously under applied shear and stress is proportional to strain rate as i discussed in the second slide there are basically two classes of fluids one is called liquids and there is called gases how do we distinguish between liquids and gases this is mainly dependent upon the cohesive forces inside the fluids liquids are composed of relatively closely packed molecules with strong cohesive forces and because of this what happens they tends to retain its volume tends to retain its volume and whenever possible it will create the free surface under the action of gravitational acceleration but in case of gases these cohesive forces are not very significant as compared to liquids and gases will tend to expand till it finds the boundary conditions i mean boundaries or gas is free to expand until it fills the volume of the container this can be very well explained uh, with an example uh, that i would be going to tell in next slide here in this uh, slide you are able to see two pictures here one is uh, a glass filled with a liquid and another glass uh, i cannot say it is filled it is having gas let us take an example of there is a glass in which water is there under the action of gravity what happens there will be a free surface formation as you can see in the picture so above that free surface air will be there because we are keeping the glass in atmospheric conditions and below that interface or free surface there will be a liquid that is water but in case of gases it will try to expand till it reaches a solid surfaces on all sides a liquid takes the shape of the container and forms a free surface in the presence of gravity what happens if there is no gravity think over this and send your reply to us and for gas it expands until it encounters the wall of the container and fills the entire available space gases will not form a free surface and gas and vapor are often used as synonymous words i hope you are understanding exactly what is gas and what is vapor provide a more understanding about the difference between the solids 